Okay, so we're picking up in uh, chapter 2 with uh, verse 8, the church in Smyrna. This uh, would be parallel to the book of Philippians. And uh, Smyrna means myrrh. Remember frankincense and myrrh? Myrrh um, is um, connected to death. Myrrh is crushed. And it's used for embalming, or was. So, verse 8, To the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, and note, um, this is one church where there is no bad report. These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. <laughs> um, that's Yeshua. He is the Alpha and the Omega. We saw that in chapter 1, verse 17. He says, I know your afflictions, I know your works, and your poverty, yet you are rich. Remember I said the churches all misunderstand themselves. Uh, those who think they're doing good aren't, and those who think they're not. Uh, are and here, um, you know, Smyrna thinks it's uh, it's in poverty, and yet Yeshua is telling them, you, "You're rich. I know your poverty, yet you are rich. I know the slander." Now catch this: of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. We're going to see this. Uh, mentioned again, and I've mentioned this in um, some of my other teachings. Um, I believe I have a teaching that's titled Replacement Theology, or certainly have a teaching about Replacement Theology. And Replacement Theology, um, there are many Christ so-called Christians out there who teach Replacement Theology, and basically what they're saying is that um, the Jews didn't recognize the Messiah when he came, therefore they're out of the picture and uh, we are Israel now and wherever you see Israel in the Bible that's talking about us um, and all of the promises that Yahweh gave to Israel, they're ours. Now that kind of a teaching, if you hear anybody teaching that, <laughs> You get away from them. <laughs> um, they're calling Abba Father a liar because there are um, promises, covenants that Yahweh made with Israel that are unconditional. They have nothing to do with what Israel does or doesn't do. Yahweh says, I'm going to do this, period. And, um, you know, there are people who want to steal that reward. And, um, you know, they, they, uh, they're calling, like I said, they're calling Abba Father a liar. Uh, they're twisting his word around to suit what they want. Um, it's a bunch of garbage. But I want to look at John chapter 8, verse 43. Yeshua is talking to the um, religious leaders, and he's saying to them, why is my language not clear to you? Because you're unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, meaning that he murdered Adam, not holding to the truth, for there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar. And, his, and um, the father of lies. Yet, because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. And he goes on to say, the reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to 
Yahweh. You know, a man is not a thief because he steals. He steals because he's a thief. There's a difference. Think about that. You, if you're a believer, you're not chosen because you believe. You believe because you're chosen. There are those who are chosen. And there are those who are not. And those, there are those who act like they are chosen and yet they're liars. And that's what Yeshua is talking about here. Those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan, they're liars. They're saying, oh, you know, the Jews rejected the Messiah, therefore uh, we're Israel, and all of Yahweh's promises to Israel are ours. Well, that's a lie. And they are liars, and therefore they are of the synagogue of Satan. So anyone who teaches that, get away from them. Verse 10. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Um, let's back up there for a minute. He says, you will suffer persecution for ten days. What does that mean? Well, there were 10 Caesars who persecuted Christians. And I believe that is what the Messiah was pointing at. And then he says, um, <clears throat> Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Um, I did a fairly recent teaching about the seven crowns. Until very recently, I only knew about five of them. Um, but uh, after some more serious digging and um, some help from others, I discovered uh, seven crowns. Two of them are um, have the same name. But anyway, uh, here we see the crown of life. That's from, uh, the, you can see that in the book of James. Chapter 1, verse 12, um, as well as here in Revelation, chapter 2, verse 10. Uh, there's the crown of righteousness, that's in 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 8. Um, there's the crown of glory, seen in 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 4. Um... There's another crown of glory in the Old Testament. I don't have that one noted here, so if you want to know where that one is, uh, you'll have to listen to my teaching on it, the seven crowns. Um, but it seems to me that the crown of glory in the Old Testament um, is specifically speaking to Israel, where the one here in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4 is, 4 is specifically speaking to the called out ones, the ecclesia commonly uh, in most English Bibles, referred to as the church. Uh, number, f well, the next one would be the crown of incorruption, the crown of incorruptible. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. And then you have the crown of rejoicing, seen in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. And... Um, this one's beautiful. The crown of everlasting joy. <laughs> Isaiah 35, 10. Um, verse 11. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit says to all the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. What is the second death? Um... The first death is physical when somebody dies. Um, their soul is separated from their body. Um, but the second death is seen at the end of the book of Revelation. Um, and that is separation of the soul, the spirit, 
from Yahuwah. That's talking about those who are, ca who are cast out into the outer darkness. Permanent separation from Abba Father. Now, um, Smyrna and Philadelphia are the only two churches that have no condemnation mentioned. And they are the only two churches that are still remaining today. Something to think about. Um, let's see if we can get through um, the church in Pergamum. This would be parallel to the book of uh, Corinthians. And Pergamum refers to mixed marriage. Per means mixed. And gamum means uh, marriage. Marriage to the world. Uh, Pergamum was also known as the city of the serpents. And uh, we'll see that uh, this is where, uh, where Satan lives. <laughs> Priestly cults came from Babylon to Pergamum and then went on to Rome. Um, all of the dark arts, false religions, all come out of Babylon. And if you've ever gotten into the secret, if you ever looked at the video right in the beginning, it tells you that this uh, teaching comes out of Babylon. Well... Stay away from anything that comes from Babylon, you know. Um, anyway, to the church in Pergamum, to the angel of the church in Pergamum, write, These are the words of him who has the sharp, double-edged sword. That's the uh, large sword that we saw in uh, chapter 1, verse 16. That's the Ramphea, a very long, double-edged sword. Um, there's a, a short sword mentioned um, uh, in Ephesians, the Machaira, that's an 18-inch uh, short sword meant for close quarters, close hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, as an example by Christ when he was in the desert and the devil was tempting him. Um, he kept responding to Satan with short quotes from the word. That's the machaira, the short sword um, for close battle with your enemy. Quotes of God's word. But uh, the Messiah here in Revelation, he, he's got this long sword he can reach, and it cuts both ways, double-edged. Anyway, um, these are the words of him who has the sharp, double-edged sword. He says, um, I know where you live. I know your works. And I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me. Even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and by committing sexual immorality. The teaching of Balaam, uh, you can see, if you want to look into that, you can read in the book of Numbers, chapters 22, 25, and 31. Um, Balaam taught Balak how to fool the Israelites into sinning so that um, they would break Yahweh's commandments and uh, bad things would be allowed. So the Messiah is saying here to the uh, Church of per Pergamum, you have people here who hold to that kind of teaching. Um, and likewise, verse uh, 15, you also have 
those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. We saw that um, earlier in the chapter, um, which is, you know, lording over the flock. I'm better than you are. I'm your teacher. Uh, you don't know anything. I know everything. You're nothing. I'm everything. And, uh, you know, don't tell me. I tell you. Uh, lording it over the sheep who are loved by the Father and given to His Son as a gift. Those who lord over those innocent sheep is something that Yeshua hates. Um, and He says it here again. But He says, likewise, you also have people who hold to that teaching, looking down on my sheep, uh, which thing I hate, and he says, repent, therefore, turn around, change your ways. Otherwise, I will soon come to you and I will fight against them with the word of my mouth. That's the large sword, the Ramphea, the long double-edged sword. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to all of the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. Manna in Hebrew means, what is it? <laughs> um, this is the hidden manna. I'm, I'm not sure what the hidden manna is, but I know that I want to get some. <laughs> I will also give, oh, I love this one. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. That means, you know, in eternity, if you get one of these white stones, you're going to look at it and you're going to see this name and you're going to gasp and you're going to say, I may have never spoken this name literally before, but this name I have known my entire life long like I've known my own self. It's going to be a powerful thing. I'm going to stop there, and we'll pick up um, in uh, verse 18 with the church of Thyatira next week. <laughs> Shalom.